Please hang up and try again. Let us demonstrate a program to generate random numbers. I'm going to use two different techniques in order to assist you to generate those random numbers. Now, random numbers, you might think that is some arbitrary number that was generated magically. In reality, it was there's some mechanism in Java to help you to simulate that aleatory values. Now, Java has a peculiar way to do that. The most easy way to generate that is by using the math library. Remember that the math library, there's a lot of different methods, as you can see here, or also called functions. And if I click here random, basically it will give you the description about the random. Let's pay attention what it says here. Random function, it will give you back a double. It's a value between zero and one. And everything that is between those two values should be a, a real value. So basically, if I click like this, it will generate a random number between zero and one, not inclusive one. It's a double, and I'm gonna call it R for random. What I'm going to do right here is that I'm just gonna print R so you can see what exactly we're generating. And I go to the terminal, compile the program, and then run it so you can see that it's going to generate a random number between zero and one. Now we have 0.75. Five, six, six, nine, one, blah, blah, blah. If I run this program again, I will generate another random number and so on. Okay, that seems pretty interesting and very small values. The question is, how can we generate this even larger numbers? Remember that when I generate random number, R, now it's a random number between zero and one. So how can we make it larger? Suppose that we just want to make larger the random value we can basically scale it. So in case we wanna make a random value between zero and 10, we can simply multiply by 10 and that will generate a more larger value. Of course, we're multiplying by 10. Obviously we're gonna expand, we're gonna scale it up a little bit further. So I'm just printing R2. Let's save, compile and run this program and let's see what happens. So here we're generating, the very first one is the first random value R. The second one is scale it up. Notice that the random number that we generated was 0.048. That's why when we multiply by 10, we generate 0.48. Let's hopefully get a larger value next time, like this one. Notice that we generate a random value 0 0.2409, but when we multiply times 10, now we have 2.4. That's good enough. Let's run it again. Now we have 8.07 and so on. Here we have 0 0.3, 0 0.6, 6.8. Okay, now we're generating kind of larger numbers. But let's pay attention on the discussion here that we have. We want just one random balance between 0 and 10. The problem here is that when generate this random value, we're generating double value which is not what we want. In reality, we want a whole number like integer. Okay, professor, but if you do this and you're trying to compile this program, Java will give us a problem. Java complaining about something went wrong. Of course, there's a problem because this is an incompatible type. We might lose conversion between a double and an it. And since we're expecting a whole number in the left-hand side of the equal signs, and this part is a double, then we need to either make our minds to be a double or a whole number. For that, you know the trick already, when we can just type cast whatever we have the result of this multiplication. Let's save, compile, and run this program. <laughs> But there is no 10. As a matter of fact, we're not going to generate 10 because remember that math.random generates values between 0 and 1, not inclusive the 1. 0 is indeed inclusive, but we don't have the actual value of 10. 
How can we do that? If we go back to our code, this value R, which is the one that we generate on line three, it's a random value between zero and one, and we scale it up times 10. But if we want to include the 10, we need to go one more step. That's why if we want to include the value of 10, this should be multiplied by 11, not inclusive 11. Let's save, compile, and run this program, and let's see what happens. So we have six. Let's hopefully get the 10 soon. Six, two, nine, seven, six, seven, six, two, four, six, eight, three, 10. There it is. We got the 10. This way, we learn a couple of different things. First of all, how to generate random numbers by using math.random. Second, how to scale it up, how to make it bigger by just multiplying by a larger value. If we want whole numbers, we can just simply use the typecast and that will truncate or make it whole numbers depending on what you want. There's another way to generate random numbers. This time we can use the class random. The class random, similar as scanner, has to be at the very, very beginning of the class. In other words, try to define this line of import, probably the first or the second line of code just before the class scope inside the main. Similar to what we did like scanner, we're gonna create an object random. The object random has methods or functions, similar as we did with math. This time we're gonna use the object RAM that we create on line four. And notice when I click dot, it will generate all these methods to use. We're gonna use next INT, which stands for integer. And let's pay attention what is reading here. It says, return a pseudo random uniform distributed value, integer, between zero, inclusive, and specified value, exclusive. That means that whatever we put in parentheses, which is called a bound, we will generate a value between zero and that number not inclusive. Very similar what we did with math.random. With math.random, we have to go one more step. In order to generate that particular value, we consider 11 to give you a value between zero and 10. Make sure you change here double since we're expecting an integer with the INT. So we're expecting a whole number. This way, we don't have to transform type cast or truncate the values to whole numbers. And that's it. We just generate a number by using the object random, and we call the method next int from zero to 10. We generate the value r, which it will be a variable r, which is an integer, and we simply print it on line six. Let's save, compile, and run this program and see what's happening. As you can see, we generate values between zero and 10, inclusively 10, by using the object random from Java.